Welcome to this SIGO online training demonstration. In this session, we will discuss redundant architectures for virtual I.O. and provide a tutorial for the process of creating an HAVNIC. An HAVNIC provides redundant access from a server to a physical network resource. First, let's review the underlying hardware and connections used to implement redundancy for virtual I.O. Now, while a single SIGO I.O. director can provide redundancy in some of the data path, it is not a fully redundant architecture. To provide complete redundancy in the data paths, two SIGO chassis are required. Now let's look at the physical host. It requires two InfiniBand connections, one to each chassis. Ideally, two single port HCA cards can be used to provide connections for the chassis. But if you don't have room for two cards in the host, a single two port card could be used instead. Now we can review the different HA configurations used for virtual I.O. The first configuration is the HA VNIC architecture. The HA VNIC is a feature of the SIGO I.O. director. Notice that this feature only applies to Linux and Windows hosts. We will discuss ESX hosts in a moment. The HA VNIC operates in an active passive mode. The primary interface carries all the traffic until some failure causes the interface to go down. Then the secondary interface immediately begins to carry traffic. The users will never know a failure has occurred. We will configure an HA VNIC later in this session. The next configuration is the redundant VNIC architecture. There is no difference in how the hardware is configured. The difference lies in how the virtual interfaces are configured and used. Notice we are connecting to an ESX host. ESX supports a feature called NIC teaming and that provides redundancy and failover capabilities. Each chassis presents a simple VNIC to the host and ESX does the rest. Basically, the difference between these first two configurations is where the intelligence lies to handle the failover. In the first case, the HA VNIC, the SIGO IO director manages the failover. In the second case, the redundant VNICs, the ESX host manages the failover. The last configuration to review is the redundant VHBA architecture. In this case, the SIGO I.O. directors only present paths to the hosts in the form of VHBAs. The host then uses a multipath driver to manage those paths. Multipath drivers and their associated capabilities will vary by host operating system. Also, we assume that the fiber channel switches and storage arrays are configured to support the paths from the host to the relevant LUNs. Let's review redundant architecture details assuming we are using two SIGO I.O. directors. First, we start with Linux and Windows hosts. For redundant data paths to physical network resources, we can use the HA VNIC. For redundant data paths to storage resources, we use multiple VHBAs, then rely on storage management software with multipath capabilities to manage those paths. Now we can move to ESX hosts. There are a couple of differences you need to be aware of. First, HA VNICs are not supported. For redundant data paths to physical network resources, we can use multiple VNICs and configure those into a single vSwitch. We are relying on the NIC teaming feature of ESX to manage those paths. For redundant data paths to storage resources, just like other operating systems, we use multiple VHBAs, then rely on storage management software with multipath capabilities to manage those paths. One final note about ESX hosts. Remember when configuring virtual resources across multiple chassis that the local ID must be unique for a given ESX host. Review other online training presentations or product documentation for a complete discussion of the local ID setting. A simple hint to help manage this is to use odd local IDs for chassis number one and even local IDs for chassis number two. Creating an HA VNIC using XMS is very similar to the process of creating a standalone VNIC. We will go through the process and I will describe the differences. Basically, we will configure two separate interfaces, one for each chassis, that will work together to provide the failover capability. We are logged into XMS and I am looking at the VNIC summary screen. We press the New button to begin the process. The first step in the workflow is to select a server profile. The server profile links us to the physical server that will get this new virtual interface. Then we get to name the HA VNIC. The name is arbitrary, 
but it will be reflected in the host. There is also room for a description to provide more details if necessary. Then I choose the termination port for this virtual interface. I am given a list of all the available ports on the chassis I selected. I choose the port that connects to the physical network I need and press Next. So far, this is exactly the same as configuring a standalone VNIC. This step is where I begin to configure the second interface that will act as the HA partner for the primary interface. I select Specify HA Configuration and click Next. The group name is pre-populated with the name you gave the first interface. Do not change this setting. The name of the interfaces must be the same across the two chassis. Auto switchover tells the HA VNIC pair what to do after the initial failover. The initial failover is automatic. You can use the auto switchover setting to tell the interfaces to go back to their original state once the primary interface is fixed. Finally, we want to select the multi-chassis HA setting. Although you can configure an HA VNIC pair on a single SIGO IO director, that configuration does not provide redundancy if a failure interrupts service to an entire chassis. Next, we select which chassis will get the secondary virtual interface. Then we select the server profile. The server profile name for the secondary virtual interface must also be exactly the same as the server profile name for the primary virtual interface. Then I choose the termination port for the secondary virtual interface. I am given a list of all the available ports on the chassis I selected. I choose the port that connects to the physical network I need and press Next. The summary screen allows me to check my work before I continue. When I press Finish, I get a screen showing me the results of the process. When I close the confirmation screen, I am taken to the VNIC summary screen. Here, I can check the state of my virtual interfaces and make sure they are up and running. It may take a few seconds to complete the VNIC creation process with the physical server. Refreshing the browser window shows us when the process is complete. That completes this demonstration of creating an HA VNIC pair of interfaces. Now let's turn our attention to the Windows host to see how these virtual interfaces look. On the Windows host, we can use the Device Manager to see the virtual interfaces. Note that one interface is labeled .p for primary, and one is labeled .s for secondary. However, the interface we are most interested in is the SIGO failover adapter labeled with the group name we specified in XMS. From Windows' point of view, this is the interface that is doing all the work. One last note, on Linux host, only a single interface is shown. The underlying HA VNIC pair is hidden. That completes our review of the redundancy architectures and the process of creating an HA VNIC. Thanks for watching.